Morning, ladies and gentlemen. I know we've got people online. Um, good morning once again. Um, my name is Theodora Mudise. I'm the coordinator for events at the library. Thanks for joining us for this book discussion. The name of the book is Bridging the Digital Divide in AI and Information Overload. And the program involves volume modules, and this one is volume one, which is Convergence of Technology in Information Societies. Now, I would like to introduce our author, you know, for this morning. The author is Adebisi Dawodi, Dawodi, Dawodu. It's also known as Shalom. He was born in Nigeria, did his primary and secondary education, and then afterwards did a diploma in theology, still in Nigeria. After completion of his diploma, he worked in several ministries. And in the process, 
also registered for a diploma in business studies. He left Nigeria in 2005 to join us in South Africa. And then uh, in South Africa, he then enrolled for a course in web design, web page design, and eventually completed a diploma in graphic design in multimedia in 2009. He also joined the Christian Bible College in South Africa then went back to Nigeria and then came back. And now presently in South Africa, he, he's doing ministry. He's still in ministry, but his ministry is different because his focus now is on information processing and information technology and all those related disciplines. But he still does some work with the, the prisons in South Africa, where he takes his ministry to. And I think it's a good thing for us that we have uh, people who can still go to prisons and um, convert our prisoners, you know. Um, so he's presently studying, he also studied with the University of South Africa, currently studying archive and records management. He's a member of the Library and Information Association of South Africa, LIASA, member of the South African Society of Archivists, SASA, and the member of the Association of African Indexers and Bibliographers, which is ASAIB. -A 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 okay, so Please welcome our author, Adivisi, to tell us about his book. Thank you very much, Adivisi. The platform is yours. Good morning. Uh, thank you, you have to talk loud. Okay. Go no, ahead. you don't need the mic. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the invite. Yeah. The, the book, uh, speak louder. Yeah, the book and consign is based on the the development of the human race that we have presently. It talks on the bridging. You can talk louder. Yeah, yeah it, it talks on the bridging the digital divide in AI and uh, information overload. And uh, the, this, this online sites that the books can be located or uh, is on the Amazon's, Amazon online. As I said, uh, the human race is, is in the uh, a development and uh, we need to kind of have this understanding of the development. You know, AI should, should be a thing of complementary into human development, not a punishment. And the, the concept, uh, the, the, the concept came from the importance, as I've said, of artificial intelligence, AI, in the information society. It just bridges the data divide in AI and information overload program world. In this book, uh, explanation was given in terms of the great literatures, information society, knowledge mapping, information mapping, information overload. All these elements we have, we need to kind of understand it. We need to understand it so that by the time a high kind of uh, utilized in our environment, will not be in irrelevant, will be relevant to the use of AIs and is important in our society. This is what the book addresses. It talks on how we can have this knowledge of this artificial intelligence. It's not a punishment, neither is something that will kind of make us to lose focus of our personalities as a professionals or non-professionals. AI 
is things of development. And this book talks in that area. It talks about by, by we having a contact with this book, we will understand this information. I will be able to kind of map it to our colleagues in the institution that we are working at or in our society. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Um, do, are you doing the presentation? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can do the presentation. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, continue the presentation. The presentation, okay, ma'am. And um, as I've said, the site is uh, where the book can be located is the uh, Amazon website. Uh, Amazon of US, and then uh, it will give us a more details of what I'm presenting for you this morning. Uh, but we kind of looking at it. As I said, bridging the data divide in AI and information overload program module volume one. It says convergences of technology in the information society. You know, these are convergences of technology in the information society. And we will be surprised in few months or few years, we'll be coming up with lots of innovations that will be throwing at us in our environment. But by we having this information, it will not it will not be kind of a, be a person that will be fearful in what we are seeing, but rather be a, a kind of a, it will be, a, it will be a, a kind of a relevant to us on what we are doing. You now, as I said, we look at the importance of these activities, great literatures, information societies, information overload, the importance of AI in the information society, and the accessibility of AI, also non accessibility of AI, AI in the digital divide, also look at the AI in the working society, information audits, information mapping, knowledge audits, knowledge mapping, and also we look at multimedia and also information infrastructures. Then we also look at finally the destructive technology. This is all about destructive technology. You know, the convergences of all this information is called destructive technology. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The first part. Okay. Um, I think just go up and the first part where the book is, and then you can come sit down and we can discuss it. Yeah, leave it here. Leave it here. Yeah, leave it here. Please take no leave. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much um for the presentation. And um yeah, for our online audience, um I hope you can hear us and I hope we can project you know, our voice as well, for you to hear us. So what motivated you to write this book? Okay, thank you so much, Ma. In some of the motivations, you know, this particular uh, materials, it has been uh, many years of uh, kind of uh, learning from the University of South Africa. As I've said, I, uh, I did uh, ICAS and Health Management there. Can I just check with our audience first? Can the audience hear us? 
they, they can hear. They can also hear him talking. Okay. Okay. Yes. yes. So, as yes. I'm, as I'm saying, uh, it's a many years work mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, I, I did this program called the mm -hmm. uh, uh, Icons and Record Management. And in one of the modules, we have been taught about the ethics of information. Mm -hmm. And in that particular modules, uh, we look at the, the, the bridging the digital divide, mm -hmm. the inequality. Mm -hmm. You know, after that, I went ahead to go uh, to Europe for a, uh, information science. Mm -hmm. Then all these things, it has been many years of learning. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, fine, if you start I'll be doing masters, mm -hmm. then I will need something for my presentation. Mm -hmm. I said, fine, let me come up with this, uh, with this project, with these materials. Mm -hmm. Uh, bridging the data divide in AI mm -hmm. and information overload, you know, so that your, you know, communities, you know, in the professional sectors and non-professional sectors, we have kind of information of this being relevant into the uh, uh, present days of convergences. Mm -hmm. of this is how it comes about, and mm -hmm. uh, it's many years of learning and study from the. So who is this book meant for? Who is supposed to read this book? Yeah, everyone. Oh, basically, as I said, you no, know, coming from the library setters, you know, study libraries, it, it, it works uh, perfectly for all settings for the all faculties of areas of life. It, it, either you are from the libraries working in the library environment or any environment that you work in. Because AI now is something that is going to be in all departments, yeah. all areas of life, mm -hmm. all disciplines. Mm -hmm. It's meant for everyone mm -hmm. that want to be relevant mm -hmm. in this present days of convergence of, mm -hmm. of technology. Mm -hmm. You're talking about equality, you know, inequality, equality. So who are we referring to specifically when we talk about an equal society or inequality. Who, what are we talking about? Yeah, uh, talking about inequality. You know, inequality, we, we need to bridge this digital divide <laughs> inequality. Not about in an academy, not about in technology or in environment. We also can bridge this digital divide in this area, area meaning that fine, many may be saying, fine, I'm working in the libraries, I'm working in the organization, I'm working in the bank, but this introduction of AI, I've lost my job. You know, it's all about inequality. And uh, uh, when it's talking about how can we bridge this data divide okay. in yeah. these sectors of in these areas of areas of human or uh, daily environment, you know, meaning that fine by by the, this book address this particular people, you know, as a professional. Yeah in the academy, in the private you know, institution or not private institutions. Now, men have lost their job, the area, AHA has replaced them, or uh, the libraries too, now that maybe, maybe you are a frequent visiting library, you'll find AHA there, you won't see anybody. These are what they call inequality. Okay, let's take an example of somebody who's working in the bank and then they lose, this, they lose their job because of AI. What what use will this book be for for the person like that? How will that person, you know, gain confidence, or how will this book help that person? Thank you so much, Bob. Yeah, the book will help in in all areas because fine, you know, make you not to be uh, a, a person of information. The first thing first is the information. You know, fine. I was told this morning by Lou. That uh, in South Africa, or oh, in their, oh, most of their staff have lost jobs because of this impression of this AI. Mm -hmm. Now, those ones that have lost their job, they, they, they will feel like they are being kind of they are victims mm -hmm. of the of, of the okay of this bridging the digital divide. Mm -hmm. But not, not knowing that they need to also have understandings of this present days, many are still going to lose or lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. Because of this uh, introduction of AI. Mm -hmm. Now, while we have uh, a contact with these materials, mm -hmm. it will enable us to have this understanding of knowledge mapping. That's what we need. Mm -hmm. And it's that we have to engage in conferences, we have to pick up a book, 
that talks about this okay. AI. Okay. What is this AI? What is it doing for us? Are we kind of, is it going to replace human beings? Yeah. No. But by we having this information, it will help us to map this knowledge mm. to other people that may not have understandings of this information. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You're talking about gray literature. Yes, ma'am. Can you talk more about gray literature? Yes. Gray literature is a literature that is not commercialized. It is a literature that can, cannot be bought from the uh, from the uh, bookstores or from the marketing environment. A great literature is a literature that can be accessible either by way visiting the libraries or by way visiting where is where information being located. Mm -hmm. And now, great literature is a literature in the, the uh, law sectors. It talks about patterns, you know, it talks about patterns, it talks about information of the government, like white paper, yellow paper of the government. You know, the citizens, these are what we call about knowledge mapping. You no, know, it's a time of information. You know, it's not about we are we losing job. The great literature addresses all these areas. You no, know, now for, for instance, if I need a great literature, I will not access. It. I have to walk to the libraries. I have to walk to the information centers to access this information. For all this information, AI have done the job. Information of things have done the job. The internet have done the job. You know, the ro robotics have done the job. Meaning, meaning that it can be captured and placed online. Mm -hmm. I can access the white paper. Now, for instance, now the, the, the president have announced the, the opening of the parliament. But these are literatures, the white paper, the, 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 the government, the consultants, they can all be accessed from the internet rather than from working to the information center, like libraries, mm -hmm. that where information is located. This book addresses that in about great literature. What is great literature? How can I access great literature? Now it's cold, now in South Africa, it's my winter. I'm old, I don't want to kind of visit the information center. How can I access this? Mm -hmm. Now, AI have done this for us. We can access it on the internet. Mm -hmm. But we sit in our office, but we don't you know in our house. You, you, you said this book is volume one, and you've got volume two coming up. So what made you to write this book in a modular format? Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you for that question, ma'am. Mm. You know, as I've said in the introductions, you know, what is a program mode we need to engage? It's not a book that we read for, you know, you just take the book and read. It's a book that talks about post assessment. It talks about after you read a book, it has a volume one to volume two. Mm. It's a book that when you read the volume one, what am I gaining from what I'm reading? That, 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 that may come in the post-assessment. You know, so it talks about the assessment, the questions, and now uh, it is the uh, end of program moves. Now, each volume have all these details. And now, in the first volume, we look at the, the great literature downwards, we look at the great literature downwards to um, importance of AI. That's the first volume. Now, the second volume, we're going to look also from the AI in the digital divide. We are in the digital divide. We are in the information revolution. Mm -hmm. We are in the confidence of technology. We have to get, we have to get more understandings of this. And the volume to address that areas of, 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 of the AI in the digital divide, you know, to knowledge audits. All this knowledge, for example, those that work in the in the in the banking sectors, in the in the private sectors, they have to audit their knowledge. You know, if this knowledge is it passing to all the startups. Mm -hmm. They have understanding of these dispensations of convergence of technology. Volume two addresses it. Now, volume three, look at from knowledge mapping downwards to destructive technology. If I may intervene, you know, because these are your volumes that I can see that you're reading what will be coming up. Yes. So what you are saying is that you are encouraging employers to get this book for their employees so that they understand the impact of AI in their working environment and how they can do it 
and they can also ask, like assess themselves as they go by in their understanding of this. Is that what you are saying? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm saying because in the organization, they talk about information culture. You know, information culture talks on the information of organization, the assets of organizations. And the organizations definitely, like what happened in Stalaba, that the, 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 most of their staff got actually because of air. They, they, they might or not, you know, kind of engage them with regards to what is coming. They yeah. have. No, but we're talking about information cultures. Mm -hmm. That's the access of the organizations. Mm -hmm. They have this information. But now by, by them having the conferences, having the conversations, mm -hmm. having the information about what's happening now, you know, now they need to map this knowledge to them. You know, also mm -hmm. they mapping the knowledge. If they, 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 there should be an assessment talks mm -hmm. about the knowledge audit. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things take care of all these aspects. Mm -hmm. This book is not only being bought in libraries, being bought in bookshops. I mean, people that want to be relevant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this person, this dispensation. Mm -hmm. Let me just check if we have any questions online. We actually have three questions from Josephine of Kelsey. The first one is How relevant is the book to university students and academics? Second question is What is your opinion regarding the use of AI tools in the university? And how can students use the tools ethically? Okay, okay. Read the first one so that you okay. how relevant is the book to university students and yes. academics? Okay, so it's relevancy to university students, you know, because uh, as we all know that after the uh, uh, yes. academic activities, mm -hmm. they will want to get employed. They want to book, I mean, employ in the same environment. That is AI impact is kind of uh, everywhere, but it's relevant to them who we'll kind of prepare them for what where they are, where we are going, and also how they themselves will be able to contribute to this disposition of confidence of them. It will help them in all areas, in all areas in terms of their readiness. Because that's the first thing for their readiness. Now, am I ready for this? Uh, dispensations. Uh, can I be relevant? Now, definitely, these resources need to complement with what they have, they have been told, that this AI well, going to improve, going to give you information of what you have learned, also what is going to be ahead of you in the working sectors. But then you're talking about the student, but for an academic, what, what, how will they benefit? Yes, academic, it will benefit them in all aspects. They will have understanding of this area. Mm -hmm. They will be the person that will do the knowledge map in their wherever they have been working, also in, in their society. It will benefit them, you know, is is a new dispensation which they need to be taught. We have to be taught about this. We have to have influence about this. It's mm -hmm. not a punishment. It's a woman raised development. Okay. Yes. The second, the second one is what is your opinion regarding the use of AI tools in the my opinion, I mean, my, my opinion always be positive because that uh, we are, I could remember uh, in my high school days, we used to have a meeting in my school days in terms of communication, in terms of going one to one. There's no telephone, but some of it. There is telephone. We have all form of telephone. Now we have been using telephone. And this is what is happening. Now that's uh, my opinion is or is positive when the development of human rights. And AI, it should be like telephone. Yes. And AI and AI will be in that development of Phones of mobile phones or cell phones of communication of phones, mm -hmm. just like the way we experienced it mm -hmm. those years in the twenties, in the twenties, in the twenties, that we experienced this uh, convergence. Also, it's a convergence also of 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 telephone communications, mm -hmm. and era is in that similar up in similar activities. Mm -hmm. You know, definitely, era is going to kind of you know come massively, just like telephone. And we have mm -hmm. all forms of cell phone organizations coming up. 
the transformer devices. Mm -hmm. And that will come about the uh, information overload. So that even the learners in schools will not be overloaded. Mm -hmm. When you have been overloaded with information, you, mm -hmm. you can't be productive. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't reason positively. Mm -hmm. But my opinion in that regard is that fine, this is a new information revolution. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing that we, we need it. Mm -hmm. You know, we need it in the in the libraries, we need it in all organizations. We need it in all faculties. We need it in all human resources. But to hear it. That's why it's coming on there. To give all this awareness, this mm -hmm. Of this mm -hmm. uh, bridging this digital divide mm -hmm. of, of, of AI in the social society. The third one, okay. The third one says that how can students use the tools if they can? Yes. Yeah, well, students can use the tools physically in all aspects. Not ethically. Ethic, ethically. Yeah, thank you so much. Ethically, when we talk about ethics, you know, ethics is you know you know this you know perspectives and this things. It can be with going through the normal perspectives. What is normal perspective? I've talked about patterns. You know, when you open organizations, you have to understand the law of patterns. You know, you have to kind of the trademark by the writers. You know, you understand the ethics of, of you being a writer. You don't understand the ethics of you being in uh, of you being uh, a person that employ or that use the humor. All this thing has ethics. Even when we fire after my, my school, you know, the, the, the ethics or the, the ethics of, 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 of me kind of being a seven you know, is that you have to go to DTR, open your organization. You have to have a trademark. You know, you have to be in the in the perspectives of the law. And now uh, AI is, is also similar to these uh, activities. You know, the ethics side of it is that we need to comply to the the laws and regulations of the yeah. Any questions? Okay. We also have a question, and it says, is, 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 is AI a good or a bad disruptive technology? Yeah, when we talk about disruptive technology, disruptive technology are technology that we use in commerce, we use in hospitals, we use in the, all aspects of that, in libraries, in academia. You know, AI is AI is in this. Uh, as you said, AI is is not a something that is not it will have it's it's harmful. It's not harmful. AI is a intelligence. Someone saw that in the 1950s, John McCarthy, he developed his, his conception. As I said in the book, somewhere in the United Kingdom, they have mapped out so the human development in terms of the level we're going to be in this uh, 2024, the level in that we're going to be in the 2030s. Mm -hmm. And they have mapped it out and they are working towards it. And it's what they call human development. And now AI is just one of it. There are so many of it that, that is coming. You talk about the robotics. You know, I was watching the, the YouTube the, on Facebook. I saw in China, they are using robots to do the farming work. Before you know it, they have done the, 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 the farm, they have done the product, they have they are even out to distribute it. Why? Because someone saw that in the United States and look at fine. How can I contribute to the human race? And AI is one of it. Okay. Any question again? Yeah. So um, I'd like to ask just one question. Would you would you say that AI is making people's creativity diminish in a way that as much as it makes things so easy? And for now, if I want AI to explain about a certain concept, not a concept actually, let me just say a certain title of some sort. Okay, I can just write it on the chat or whatever, chat or whatever, and then it just explains. Instead of just me getting to think about it and just use my natural ability, my cognitive load, would you say it's kind of like diminishing that? Yeah, it, it will not reach to that stage. But it yeah. not depends on you. But it not depends on where you are coming from. Yes. You know, maybe I could ask myself a student also in actually studying information science. Now, if I would like to do my research, I use, I mean, we have been taught about how we can make research using the, the library catalog. But in terms of intelligence, in terms of uh, bringing out the, the, the kind of knowledge in you, it will, I think it will get to that stage. It will like make it complement to what you have. 
you know, in terms of fine as a researcher, how to make a research you know, on a particular topic can, as you said, can AI diminish this kind of this intelligence in you? Mm. It will it will diminish, it will complement to your speed of recovering information. Okay. AI is an information tool. It's an information tool that we all need. You know, for, for me, for instance, I'm a writer. I write books. I write books. Now I won't go to AI, even on this Amazon that I will publish. When they ask you, are you using AI? They will block your books. They will publish it because you are using AI. You understand? You know, when when we say fine, now can it demolish the skills in me, the, the qualities in me, then meaning that can AI replace this intelligence? Yes. Right. It's, it, 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 it depends on you. Because you should use it to, for instance, now when we are writing the exam at UNESA, there's a, there's a, a kind of quantities that we have to use in resources. <laughs> even as a there's a quantity now when you use more like for instance now you are using it, uh, 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 taking the medicine when you use overdose to to destroy your systems mm -hmm. but we have this a kind of there should be a kind of a, a, a measurement a quantity that we have to use it for and we have some references because when you when you use the AI you use whatever uh or kind of a, a references to use it which are not referencing it you know, the, the, the faculty will kick you out. They say, you, you shift it. Now, there should be a measurement. Uh -huh. Why am I using this? Did I want to use it? You no, know, more than it's been, or kind of, more than what I needed for. Mm -hmm. But definitely, it should, it, it should not diminish the knowledge in us, but should have a measurement for now we are using it. Okay, we have a few more questions and uh, the first one is, how is the book going to reach out to disadvantaged communities who are not exposed to the advancement of technology? Yes, uh, in one of my activities in my company, you know, I, I, I use information science to reach out to the community, some community patrons, community engagement. You know, I, I've, I, I've done that since last year, and I'm still doing it. It's about rolling a program out to the community. Well, even the, 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 the government department, the information science government department used to do something like outreach. They roll out the, the importance of libraries to, to communities. Well, and they, they, they do it more, more often, more often. In terms of so outreach. what you are saying is that you are going out to the schools? Yeah, to the communities. And to the yeah, to communities, communities and, and talk they, about uh, this yeah, book. Definitely, definitely. So the Department of Education is aware of your book? No, I'm saying that uh, the department also have similar program mm -hmm. in terms of uh, information science. Mm -hmm. Meaning they, they bring out a program, it's called Community Engagement, mm -hmm. Community Outreach. Mm -hmm. so that talks about the library resources mm -hmm. to the community, the, the importance of the library resources. Did you resources. ever think about um, doing it um, virtual presentations where people can go and do the modules that you put on the book, but virtually, you know, on a virtual platform yes. where they can do that. They can. I'm having a similar pro program with the, uh, with the Tibet in terms of their NVC session of their, uh, of their learners, in terms of also running a program to them of, of these uh, a, a program models, just like universal being has uh, earlier on that, uh, what the learners will get from it. You know, it uh, also enabled them in the areas of the NVC, in the areas of Tibet, by the time they are, they are done with their schools. They also they also relevant in their, mm -hmm. in their communities and also using, using it while they are still in power mm -hmm. and the colleagues. So is there an ebook version of, the, of this available? The yes. ebook version yes. where people can download the ebook version and do the modules. Yes, it, 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 it's there on online. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's called the, the Amazon. Mm -hmm. I have it there on the Amazon. Mm -hmm. You just you come in. Okay. So I can download the ebook version, buy the ebook version, and do the modules there. Yes. Okay. Another question you said. No. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you think AI is replacing humans' critical thinking skills? Yes, it was okay. Uh, as been said, John McCarthy in Line Fifty, he designed something for human race to stimulate, to stimulate. 
you know, to complement to the human activities, you know, as as as, as it, 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 it's something it will take the, the work of woman totally, but just to complement. As I said, I think the government or the the, the, the legislation should kind of draft up a paper yeah. to kind of as they address the trade bar, they address law of patent. I think they should also do something similar to, to laws of air, yeah. that there should be a measurement. How we use it, there should be a measurement. How we use it as a writer, as a, as a professional in that in the library. There should be a treatment to address these issues. Okay, okay, okay. And the other one is, uh, what advice can you offer students when using AI? Yeah, it's similar question also, because uh, when I was watching your program, the conference on AI, the uh, engineer who is a presenter designing for computer using illustration on the computer. And he brought out the 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 the, the, the mechanism of that engineer physically, you know, visually. These are what uh, AI will enable students. It will kind of stimulate, it will kind of give them more information of their academic, especially in the engineering department. Mm -hmm. I really like that. And our the, the, the learners definitely by them have an engagement with this issue. As I've said, even the, the, the faculties of the university, they should draw up a, a law or uh, a, a, a kind of um, uh, a measurement that fine. These are the law, as I've said, just as the law of patterns, laws, laws of uh, laws of, of how we use it. Because when we when we use AI, definitely if I can take my assignment and go to uh, chat GPT and ask a question, before I know it, it will throw it for me. Uh, maybe I'm a writer. I just ask a question from chat GPT. It will give me everything in, in a minute. This is taking the quality out of me, as has been said. It's taking the quality out of me. But by way of having that, find this measurement. That's what comes about the measurement. The 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 the. The, the measurement that we use they are for is very important. Mm. Any other? No more questions. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. No, as in conclusion now, as we round off our discussion for the day, what do you want your audience to take from this discussion in conclusion? In conclusion, is our, our, our kind of want us to have this in our mind that we are in the information development. And this convergence of technology is not something that's kind of be harmful to us, either we are professionals or non-professionals. It's something that was kind of it will add value, it will complement our efforts. Either we work in the library, we work in the engineering sector, we have a it will complement our efforts. Mm -hmm. And those that have lost their jobs, Engage themselves. There are a lot of conferences. Engage themselves on conferences on AI, so that they will also have knowledge on AI. So I look at how can I contribute to the information age, info convergence of information we have today, and by, by them having that, it will really help them to help everybody. Will be will not be victims of information overload, so that will be confused. We lost job. When they, when they have lost job, when they are so overloaded with all form of advices, and that will make them to kind of be. And uh, it's affect their health. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. also when you are overloaded with information, that was information overload. It affects your health. You don't make it to be productive, mm -hmm. and then that comes on what we do what. But by by way, uh, knowing that AI is there and it's coming massively, it's mm -hmm. coming massively. We have to like it as on conferences and have the knowledge of it. It's really mm -hmm. important. You're working with prisoners in conclusion now. You're working with prisoners, you go to prisons. Is this relevant to them? Yeah, yeah, it's relevant. Well, we want all the, all the others. We have the prisoners that are there not because they are prisoners. You know, destiny, whatever, you know, better to be there. But as I said, my ministries, I take it to prison libraries. I did information science. You know, I use my books, you know, to. To kind of use it as a ministry. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the importance of it for them? Definitely one day or two, uh, a year or whatever, they will be free from it. 
Mm-hmm. Now, they will not be a, a novice. So, when yeah. they come out, when, when they come they, out, when they come out, they will know about AI. Yeah, yeah, they will yeah. know that the way you left the world is no longer the same. Yeah, You're going into a different world. Absolutely, and, <laughs> and then they can have this at their libraries so that they will know this. What is going on outside, outside. there? By the time they, they, they are outside there, they are, mm-hmm. and even I was with uh, this name is Samurai Seed. He worked in the his restaurant of the library. Sorry, of the customer service. I saw their reports, what they are doing. Some of them are making funny shows. They are making funny shows. They are talking about engineering. They are doing engineering. Some are doing fantastic. Mm. You know, you know, because of I saw that the funny show that, that they made after they are, you know, I mean, I mean, AI also you help them also. I don't know, but what I saw is on the funny shows. But I don't mm. know if there's engineering there also. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I mean, it will also help them. In, uh, uh, and the degrees in the, the, the prison. By the time they are free, definitely there will be a, some, somebody that will kind of contribute to the society that we are in okay. today. Yeah. Okay, Adibis, thank you very much. Um, and thank you to the audience that joined us online and even here physically. We really appreciate that you took your time off to come and join us for this discussion. For me, it was very eye opening. And I was just surprised that, um, you know, a librarian wrote this book and on artificial intelligence, because, you know, you don't expect a librarian to be focusing on artificial intelligence and making people aware of the digital divide. So I really appreciate that I also learned a lot from this. um, And I think it's up to me also to go through the modules, you know, to make sure that I'm up to date with whatever is happening, you know, in the AI world. Thank you very much, those who joined us. And I hope you'll be able to get yourself a copy of the book. Like he said earlier, you can get it from Amazon. And um, also the library will have copies of the book. So for those students that can't afford to buy the books, they are available in the library. So you will be able to get them as soon as they're available in the library. Thank you very much. I will really appreciate your connection. Thanks a lot.